Today is Saturday and today is Studio Upgrade. So the success that I've been having in producing content uh, has shown me that there's easier ways to do this and there's higher quality. One of the things I'm going to be swapping out today is my Rode Mini Micro, that's this mic here, and I'm going to be swapping it out for the Rode NT1A. So that's more of a studio sound uh, and I'll, I'm going to be doing more and more interviews and podcast kind of things. So that's really the kind of upgrade I need to move towards. I've been working with Luke Asper with Asper Studios and he's here today. So he's kind of capturing the overall uh, and I'm going to walk through some of the upgrades in the equipment that I've found. And remember, if you go back to the very first video, we were just using the iPhone as the primary camera and gradually began to find the limits for what I was wanting to do and then what is that next step. So now we're at that next step. And fortunately, because of government stimulus and SBA loans, I have an opportunity to invest in that upgrade and prepare my business for that evergreen cash flow by turning my services into content and creating much better experiences, whether I do live events or pre-recorded webinars. So that's the direction our business is headed with all the consulting and the content that we've created. One of the frustrations I've run into is doing pre-recorded webinars and having to look up and down, up and down at the content and that creates a lot of editing work. So I purchased this Glide Gear teleprompter. Luke did the research and found the best one. It also meant that I had to upgrade the tripod because of the weight of my camera on that. So I've purchased the ESDDI tripod. It's got the fluid head on it. And once I go through each of the items that I've purchased and why, then we're going to walk through and show you how we set it all up. And we'll do that in a time lapse. One of the challenges I've run into is that all of my equipment is set up on a hub. It's the Cal Digit Hub, which also means my Rode Mini Micro mic is also set up in that as well. If I want to listen to something, I have to unplug the mic because it shuts down the microphone in my camera. What's happened is that occasionally I'll go back in to record and forget to put the mic in. So I've done a great, maybe the best recording I've ever done, but nobody ever gets it because it wasn't picked up by the mic. Now what Luke has spec for me is the Scarlett 2i2. So this is another kind of hub that lets me switch back and forth without having to unplug it from my computer. So I'll never forget to have my mic plugged in when I want to record. So another addition is a new monitor. Now it's too big for me to pick up. It's an LG monitor. You'll see it when we do the the makeover. So some of the things that I can now do with two monitors, I can go back and forth with content while I'm doing Zoom. I can also see better. So one of the challenges in this new environment is that you want to look into the camera, but when you're looking into the camera, you can't also look down at your monitor as well. It's awkward to do that. With the monitor behind, I'll have a better opportunity to actually see the people I'm talking to as well. And a third benefit of this is when I'm doing editing, I can see things, I can lay it out in much larger scale and it'll be much easier for me to make smoother editing cuts. One of the apps I use is Ecamm Live. One of the nice things is you can have overlays and you can go back and forth between screens. I can have one screen set up with content and overlays and I can go back and forth and it makes it seamless to do that. If you're editing, one of the things you'll want to make sure that you can see is your timeline. And if you have that timeline spread out and at a larger scale, it makes it so much easier than looking at a 13 inch monitor, which is what I've got right now. Another challenge I was having is that my speakers are pretty much my computer speakers. I tried to use some external speakers so I could hear better. What was happening is that the people on the other side were hearing this echo or this reverb. So now again, using the Scarlett 2i2, I can have external speakers and I'll get two really good benefits. One, I'll get better quality sound and hear much better. Secondly, those on the other side won't be picking up that echo sound that I had before. Finally, one of the things that has made all of this work is my Very Desk. Now the company has changed its name to Very. I've been a big fan of Very for a long time. They're in Capel, Texas. They build great furniture and equipment for your office. The thing that's really nice 
is that you can set it up yourself. So I've got this sit to stand desk that I use all the time. And if you're doing work from home, you absolutely have to have some kind of movement throughout the day. And unless you have a sit to stand desk, you're just not going to do it. And we've done a good bit of research on the strain and stress that you accumulate throughout the day in this virtual environment. You need to move, you need to get the blood circulating in your body. The only way to do that is to have a desk that very easily raises and lowers it. Another great feature of my particular desk, it's big enough for all of the equipment. This desk allows me to set up all of my equipment on a vertical stand with arms that accordion in and out and then I've got room for my monitors as well. So now we're ready to get started to assemble this and we'll show you a time lapse as we go through it and then we'll show you the final product. So the only steps left for us are to set up the teleprompter with the tripod and that will be set up with my iPad. And in one of the areas that we're going to be working on, we'll just be able to get started today, but in a future video, we're going to tackle the whiteboard behind me. What I've currently got set up, it's a white metal with a porcelain top. So, it's, so it really catches reflection. I've got a matte vinyl finish over it. I'm using the large post-it flips to have my post-it notes up there, but I was also going to use those to do drawings and, and diagrams of concepts that I teach. The ultimate goal is to get the kind of lighting where I can just use the porcelain without having to put any cover over it. So we've got to experiment with that. It'll likely be some form of indirect lighting, bounced lighting, so that we don't have anything directly hitting it. Uh, but we're pretty much ready to go. So we'll have another follow-up on this with the monitor set up to show you how it works back and forth. We've got a time lapse of how we installed all of the equipment. We're pretty much ready to complete this next phase. And I've got to thank Luke Asper with Asper Studios for taking the time to walk through, not only just getting it physically set up, but getting all of the dials and the sequence of what I turn on when, all of the cable management. That's another area I've got to fix because there are so many cables in the back here that we've got to clean those up as well. But we're ready to go. Okay, now we've got the mic adjusted. It is so much better than the Rode Mini Micro. Another challenge I was having is that my speakers are pretty much my computer speakers. I can't believe how much this has boosted the quality. So I'm very excited now and I'll be recording more stuff because this is just fun.